Hi, my name is Phil. I like talking about politics. In this video, I'd like to discuss the government's new three-tier COVID restriction system as announced by Boris Johnson yesterday, which to me misses the opportunity, where we heard that before, to finally get a grip on the pandemic. And it sounds to me more like a plan, if anything, to pin the blame on others when, not if, when it all goes badly wrong. But first, if you'd like to be notified of daily news and politics, please subscribe to the channel and click the bell notification icon. So Parliament yesterday, Boris Johnson announced his three tier system, which civil had been called a traffic light system in various newspapers. That was the only bit they really didn't report on properly. Uh, civil servants have said, no, no, we're not calling it a traffic light system because traffic lights have a green and there's no green in the country at all. Nowhere is good. Uh, the details of how it work in other respects, however, are strikingly, not even similar, identical to what was being reported in the newspapers. So basically, the newspapers were reporting it accurately, which means they had been fully briefed as suspected. We know that Dominic Cummings does brief newspapers. This has annoyed backbench MPs no end because they want to be told first. They don't want Dominic Cummings briefing the newspapers and then his pet monkey Bojo telling them what about all about it a week or a day later when they've already read it in the newspapers for themselves. Boris Johnson made announcements yesterday that MPs already knew about because they read it in the Sunday papers. Um, but at the time I was reading those papers, I thought, well, there might be some of it that's just speculation. No, no, no. As far as I can tell, there were no surprises in the measures themselves. It was all exactly what I'd been reading the previous day. So the lowest tier, tier one, covers most of England. Remember, this applies in England. Wales, Northern Ireland and Scotland can do their own thing. Um, and what it means is we follow the existing restrictions. Chiefly the rule of six. The idea that indoors you can't, apart from the whole host of exceptions, you can't have more than six households, or you, you can't have more than six people from two or more households together. Basically, it covers houses, doesn't really cover much else. Um, so, in theory, in this tier, there's the pubs and restaurants closing at 10 pm as well. However, later on today, there's to be a vote in Parliament on that. Now, that was supposed to be yesterday, and the government pulled it. So, that vote's going to be today now. Now, if Keir Starmer decides to mobilise his Labour MPs against it, it looks almost certain to be defeated. So I'm not going to talk about that as if that's a restriction, because that could be removed tonight. However, that being said, there is some finely balanced politics at play here. Um, my inclination is, I think Starmer should tell Labour MPs to vote against it. At the moment, I think the plan is to abstain. But I'm also aware there is, there is some politics at play here. It's not as straightforward as it sounds. Then there's tier two. So tier two means you can have no mixing of different households indoors at all. Never mind rule of six. Like, no, no. Um, and the rule of six extends to outdoors. So no grouse shoots, presumably. Not that any Tory grouse shooting area would actually be put under tier two, I'm sure. And then finally, tier three, the heaviest restrictions, which at the moment seem only to be in place in Liverpool, uh, which means that in addition to the other restrictions, pubs have to close. Unless, however, they are serving meals and they only serve alcohol with those meals. It's got to be proper meals, can't be like a crisp sandwich or something. Um, but I mean, that's no problem, is it? At the end of the day, no problem. Just order a burger and 10 pints of beer. It also means leisure centres, gyms, betting shops and casinos are also closed as well. Much less of an issue. It is obviously a serious issue to some people, I accept, but it's much less of an issue generally. That appears to be it. <laughs> so even tier three falls short of the restrictions by a long way that we were placed under during the first wave. Now, in theory, this and this is what I genuinely expected. I genuinely expected the announcement to be not going far enough, but an improvement on where we were last week. Because, I mean, there's no getting away from the fact that we are where we are because the Conservatives squandered the opportunity that the initial lockdown and then the respite of summer gave us to develop an effective test, trace and isolate programme. Public health experts were constantly telling us and the government it's quite over summer. You need to get ready over summer because in autumn it's all going to go loopy. 
and the government behaved as if they'd beaten it. Oh, it's all right. They were days before it was fairly obvious we were in the second wave. The government were even saying we think we've avoided the second wave. We're we're all right. We've done. We've sorted. Blind beyond belief. But there it is. You know, uh, as has often had to be said. We can worry about blaming the arseholes for the mess after it's all over. At the moment, there is no point in blaming them for past mistakes unless it is to highlight that they are still on the wrong path. If they agree to actually change path and actually get themselves on the right path and move in the right direction, then that's fine. We can worry about what happened in the past during the post-mortem later. But one of the problem with the local restrictions so far is that they have been difficult to communicate because when everyone has to follow the same rules, well, you can get the message across because everyone has to follow those rules. There's no confusion about uh, these rules for me because they're for everyone, everyone in England, at least. Now, when some areas have different rules to others, it becomes confusing, you know, and also when the rules change. As circumstances change, you come into and out of lockdown, you add another level of confusion. Because we talk about local restrictions, but it's not like all local restrictions are the same. Local restrictions in Manchester were different to local restrictions in, in, in Bolton, for example. So there are people, yes, who are deliberately ignoring the rules and the guidance and claiming confusion. You know, like the Prime Minister's father tried to recently. But there are also others who are genuinely trying to do what's right and actually don't know what that is. And there are so many different conflicting accounts. And I don't just mean conspiracy theorists who are flooding social media, though that's not helping. And again, that would bite less severely if the government were consistent. And if they kept up their daily briefings, at least. I mean, abandoning the daily briefings was madness. But the government themselves have muddied the waters, deliberately, in my opinion. Boris Johnson recently said that people should live fearlessly, but with common sense. A classic example of the, of the conservative line on this. Contradictory. Fearlessly with common sense. What they want us to do is to behave as if the virus were not around. In other words, fearlessly. But they don't want, they don't want to be blamed if people act in a way that spreads the disease. In other words, does as the government advises. So the implication is quite clear. If the rate of infection goes up, it wasn't the acting fearlessly that was the issue. It was the fact that you didn't temper it with common sense. That, that was the problem there. The same lack of common sense that Jacob Rees-Mogg talked about when he blamed the victims of the Grenfell tragedy for their own fate. So the three-tier system should have been a step forward. It's a way of saying, look, there's, there's three types of restriction. You can learn the three types of restriction. And, uh, and all you have to do is know which tier your area is in, and it's all clear. Not a large enough step forward, but it is still, in theory, a step forward. It's clearer, though the message still needs to be got out there. I know what the message is, because I listen to him. A lot of people won't have done. I mean, I'm assuming that something will go out to people's houses so that they can have a copy of it. I hope. I've not heard that, but I hope that would be the case. Otherwise, again, how are you going to get that message to people who don't follow politics closely? And then how will they tell people which tier they're in? Again, we're going to need the local authorities to help with that, I suppose, and we're going to need to finance it. But aside from the measures themselves, Johnson's speech, the actual speech he gave when he was presenting it, sounded to me like he was raising the white flag to the virus and then making sure everyone else would be a target for the blame next year. I think he accepts that come next year, it's going to be undeniable that we've made a right mess of it. He's now decided to involve other stakeholders. Local authorities who were frozen out of information and decision making beforehand, now it seems Boris Johnson wants to involve them. He wants to work with them, so he says. He also says he wants to involve other political parties when he has previously ignored them completely. That, to me... Sounds like a government that knows it's not going to get on top of the situation. It knows it. It's given up. Uh, it may already be too late, even if they were to make the right moves now. But if it's not, there's no way of making headway without massively expanding on the only parts of the testing system that are working. That carried out by the NHS. You know, public health experts. They'd have to not only admit that their privatisation of COVID 
test and trace has failed, which makes it harder to justify selling off more of the NHS later, because that's what this is all about. They've already, they're already starting the narrative. You know, we're using private companies. This is, this is because the, you know, public services can't deliver it. Um, and they're going to use that to, to justify having more public services privatised later on. But also, it doesn't just shoot their own argument down. It stops them being able to pour more public money into the hands of their donors. But they also know that the companies that they've employed are incapable, utterly incapable. They know they're never getting on top of it. They also know that the restrictions they've put in place here are weak because they can't get away with tougher ones politically. And they aren't prepared to offer the financial support in order to make them work either in large parts of the country. So we're basically knackered. We're knackered. And I think Boris Johnson knows that we're knackered and we're in for a very tough winter indeed. Very. I think his scientific and medical advisors are telling him bluntly what's going to happen. Remember in August, they were quite public about the fact that they were telling the government, when you open schools, you need to close something else down or the rate will skyrocket. He didn't. The rate skyrocketed. You know, they will have been warning him time after time after time of what the consequences are for not acting in the right way. And those consequences have kept coming true. And I think what's happening now is Boris Johnson is accepting. He's taking it on board. He's accepting those consequences. The consequences, mind you, not the responsibility. I think he intends to pass around the blame after winter when an account has to be made. When even fewer people think that the job has been done well. That may also explain Labour's subtle change in emphasis because Starmer has so far offered his support to government measures. Not approval as such. That's different. He's, he's made it quite clear that the government have not done enough and have not responded quickly enough when their efforts have failed. He's also been very specific in his desire to see the NHS play a greater role in affairs and be better resourced for doing so. He's also called for quite a long time for adequate financial support for workers who are unable to work due to COVID, whether it be down to having to isolate or being furloughed because their businesses have been closed due to local restrictions. From his point of view, the government haven't gone far enough. But he supported the measures that have been announced as being steps in the right direction and better than nothing. That might now be changing because Starmer is now questioning the scientific basis for the measures. He's now not automatically saying, OK, we'll support the measures. He's now going, well, do some of these measures make it worse, Boris? Because, you know, that 10 p.m. curfew, I'm not sure about that one. Whilst also making it clear that he's not opposed to the restrictions. So long as they come with government support, which at the moment they're not doing. But I think more is going to be made of the government's measures not working now. I think that he's already started doing that. I think there's going to be more of that. Come the fallout next year, Starmer obviously needs the Conservatives to own their COVID response. It was their response after all. Labour were not involved in any decision making. Their decision making was basically, do you support us or not? Do you support us or oppose us? Obviously, he needs the Conservatives then to own those decisions that they made, just like he intends them to own Brexit as well. And he's done that by not trying to stop them implementing the right measures just to call out where they're not going far enough or they're not working and to ask why they're not working. I think now will be time to start pointing at other ways it could have been done and done better. So this will be the political game now. And it is unfortunate because a lot of people are suffering very badly from this, but it is unfortunately a political game. Johnson has used COVID as cover to consolidate, to centralize his own power base and to ransack the country's wealth. But he also wants to get away with his crimes and his efforts, otherwise they won't stick. As such, he will now be focused, if he accepts that there's nothing he's going to do to improve the situation, he will be as focused as possible on involving as many other agencies and political parties as possible in the blame. Because what he wants is, when next year it's undeniable that we are doing far worse than comparable countries, he wants to be able to say, it's not like anyone else had a better idea, is it? So the next PMQ should be interesting. But first will be the vote later today. Like I said, I am leaning towards saying, I think I would tell Labour MPs to vote against it. 
defeat the government. But, like I said, finally balanced politics will have to see. But those are my thoughts. Let me know yours in the comments below. Hope you found the video interesting. If you did, don't forget to click the like button. If you'd like to support the channel further, please also click the Patreon link for details. And until next time, I'll see you later.